All right, we're up to 203 people. Thank you all very much for joining us this evening. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule um, to listen in to our town hall. Um, I am Mark Lukey, Deputy Superintendent. I'm joined tonight by Dr. Tim Pullenweiner, our Director of Instructional Support Services. We also have Mrs. Christine Cornejo present with us, Mrs. Sherry Gladden as well. Um, but myself and Dr. Fulmer are going to carry most of the presentation. Just to let you all know that we are recording tonight's town hall. I ask that you keep your microphones muted um, at all times. If you have a question, please use the chat box um, to, to record your question. The chat box is also being saved so that we can follow up um, the town hall with a frequently asked questions document. Um, to make sure that we're all on the same page uh, with our next steps um, to uh, returning to work in the school year. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump on in and share my screen. Um, and those who are joining us late are going to, I'll try to keep an eye on that. Okay. So again, welcome to our town hall tonight. Um, on behalf of Mr. Irvin and our board of trustees, I want to welcome you all to um, our classified town hall session. Uh, we always start our presentations with um, our guiding principles, uh, our core values of equity, integrity, caring, collaboration, and personal and collective accountability. Uh, tonight, I uh, want to focus on collaboration because in order to accomplish what we have um, in store for us, uh, at least at the onset of this year, it's going to take all this working together um, to ensure that our um, students receive the very best possible you know, education and support from our staff. Um, our vision in the district is to be the model of educational excellence, equity, and innovation. Um, as we work forward this year, our goals and priorities of the school district do not change. However, the strategies by which we're gonna accomplish our goals are gonna to have to change, uh, being that we're in a virtual only format uh, to start the school year. And our mission statement is to educate all students at the highest levels of academic excellence to become collaborative, creative, and critical thinkers. And again, to accomplish this, uh, we're gonna to have to work together uh, as one large team in the district um, to be successful. Um, we see these documents on the walls of our offices and our school facilities. Um, these guiding principles really are um, the breadth and the depth of our work as an organization. And again, as we go through tonight's presentation, um, the, the, the message that we're going to uh, try to convey is the importance of collaboration, working together as one team um, to accomplish the goals um, of our school district. So a message to um, our classified employees. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Irvin, who's unable to join us tonight, I do want to share that as we, as we begin the 2021 school year, every employee is critically important to our district's efforts. As we rise to the challenge of distance learning together, we will support the academic and social emotional needs of all students. Although teaching and learning will look different this year, the essential services provided by our classified employees, you in attendance, will continue to play a key role throughout the Bakersfield City School District. So tonight we are going to walk through three uh, main topics. We're going to walk through uh, the health and safety measures uh, of our district's plan. And I want to pause that by saying um, we've worked very well with Lindy Nielsen, CSA president, throughout this process as part of our task force ongoing conversations. Please know that as we walk through tonight's elements, um, these elements will be further defined um, as we finalize um, our um, memorandum of understanding um, that's still yet to be completed. So please know we're working diligently to make that happen, but there still are some uncertain elements with respect to um, our return uh, to school plan. So bear with us. We'll also talk about our distance learning plan for all of our classified employees who work at the school site level, um, when are we returning to work? Uh, what will my duties look like? We're gonna try to uh, start to kind of paint a picture tonight of what that will be. Um, 
and I try to give you some clarity there. And then we're going to talk about the next two weeks and uh, what this week uh, is going to encompass um, at our school sites as we work to engage families, as we work to organize materials, as we work to um, prepare for uh, next week and then the first day. Um, and once again, if I can, just ask that you uh, mute your microphones, um, if at all possible, um, so that everyone can hear uh, the presentation. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ful Dr. Fulnoy that we are in our current reality of distance learning due to the current conditions of COVID-19 in Kern County. And only and until um, we have um, the local health jurisdiction monitoring list uh, for 14 days, the district must conduct distance learning. And we will have to be off this monitoring list for at least 14 days consecutively um, to have the opportunity to bring our kids back um, in any kind of in-person um, format. So uh, our message for our community is, you know, we have to wear our masks. We need to socially distance. Um, all of us understand and, and under, uh, have the feeling that our kids need to be back in school. Um, but until our community can um, have our numbers more in control, we're going to be in this current distance uh, learning format. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Fulenweider, um, who's going to take us through the next series of slides. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see all of you here today. So we're going to talk about some health and, and safety measures um, related to our school district. So if we go to the next slide. Know that all of the health and safety measures that we are putting in place and have put in place are all related to the guidance that we've received through um, our governmental agencies, such as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, California Department of Public Health, and the California Department of Education. Um, it's important to note that sometimes these um, sets of guidance change from time to time. So we expect that to continue as we go through to the future, that as more is known about the current pandemic, uh, that our guidance will evolve and change, and we're committed to following that guidance uh, to the best of our ability. We definitely believe in maintaining not only the safety of our, our students and, and our, our parents, but also almost uh, also equally importantly as, as our staff. So we have to all be in this together and, and, uh, and move forward. So let's go to the next slide. All right, so health screenings for staff. So this is something um, that is a part of guidance. I've actually begun doing this this week. Um, today was the first day of really doing this across the district, uh, both here at the Ed Center, at job sites, and at school sites as they uh, reopen to certain functions to um, the public and other staff coming on. So it involves a you know daily self-assessment review, so you'll all receive, if you've not received already, uh, an email from Human Resources with a, quite a few resources in it that are wonderfully put together. Um, and one of those is a daily self-assessment. So the idea is that every person has a responsibility to all of us within the organization to have some self-monitoring of their current level of health. And so this daily self-assessment gives you the opportunity uh, when you wake up in the morning uh, to review whether you have any of the symptoms or any concerns, um, and then to choose to uh, essentially, if you have the symptoms, to, to stay home. So if you feel sick or you've recently had contact with a person who uh, you believe ha has COVID-19 or strongly believe that, maybe they're being tested because they had symptoms, we want you to stay home um, because that's that's important. There's, there's no reason to risk things if, if that's where you are. Um, also, um, we have no touch temperature checks um, at our locations. So our temperature checks involve using an infrared thermometer um, that will be um, held up one inch to two inches away from your forehead or a person's forehead. 
and then it takes your temperature. So um, the other thing that we do um, is that once we really resume in-person instruction, uh, we'll also uh, begin for the majority of staff and students that come on what's referred to as surveillance testing, which essentially means the idea that if we notice somebody who's experiencing symptoms, then obviously we want to pull them to the side um, and have them looked at for possible, um, whether they need to go home for COVID symptoms. So go on to the next slide. All right, so additional health and safety measures. So all employees, again, are they're required to review the CDC safety protocols. And um, here's one, stop the germs. And you can see a poster of it uh, there on the screen. And um, in addition, the BCSD return to work safety protocols and procedures, uh, which have been outlined in great detail. And I believe should be uh, have hit your inbox probably already in your email uh, with an email from Christine Cornejo. Uh, included with that is a training video designed to help everyone understand how to best maintain a safe workspace for themselves and their coworkers. Uh, and in addition, all managers will be providing training to ensure that um, we are all aware of and practicing and enforcing all our health and safety protocols. So the main protocols essentially are physical distancing. We wanna stay you know, six feet away generally from others. Um, and that is so that any aspirations or breathing that comes out of someone's mouth tends to fall uh, to the ground based on the science and the research that we've seen uh, and won't get to a person in general six feet away. So it's one measure of protection. Uh, another measure of protection is face coverings. We wanna make sure everyone's wearing a face covering. And I just wanna remind everyone that face coverings are um, not this 100% foolproof way of a person preventing receiving something, but it is a, it, a very strong likelihood that it will present you prevent you from giving something to someone else. And that when we combine things like physical distancing, and face coverings together along with hand washing and not touching your hands and face. Um, what it essentially does is minimizes the risk that we may contract this virus. Next then, slide. If I can just uh, one statement, uh, some of the people in the room are having a hard time hearing you. So if you can just speak a little bit louder. And then the first question in the chat box that I want to pause here and maybe invite uh, Christine or Aaron into this one as well. Um, will the district provide COVID testing for staff or will we have to go to other public sites? So I, I'm, I'm going to take a first crack at that and I've unmuted Christine so that maybe she might respond. But um, there was some guidance put forth by the state regarding uh, testing as it relates to when people come back in person and students come back in person. However, one of the caveats was that it had to be done to the extent that it was capable to be done within the juris local health jurisdiction. So currently, you may have heard um, there's a backlog of cases here in Kern County. That's why you've seen some of those very high numbers if you've paid attention uh, to that um, when the health department releases, um, you know, who's infected, those type of things. Um, however, we're hopeful that by the time we do reopen, that backlog will be gone testing capacity will be increased. And essentially the state has re recommended that we test a quarter of our staff on a rotating basis um, throughout the month so that every month everyone is tested uh, a quarter of them each week. Um, so we look forward to seeing that hopefully taking place when we get back. Um, and I'm sure we'll hear more information about that. Christine, is there anything you'd like to add to no, that? No, I think you pretty much covered that, Tim. Right now, HR is in the midst of looking at um, uh, medical facilities and vendors that will be able to assist us with the number of employees that we have. So um, up until that time, we will be gathering information and um, looking into that. So Thank more information will come. Hey, Christine, I noticed a question in the, in the chat. And since you're talking, it says, teachers, assistants who receive health benefits from the district, if furloughed, will we still receive health benefits? So given that it was furlough, I thought. Right. At this time, um, the district is not looking at furloughing um, our classified members. 
um, so that your health benefits remain intact um, for the 2021 20, um, school year at this time. Great. Okay. Uh, two more questions that we might as well just jump to right now since, uh, Christine, you're on. If we get sick, is additional sick time granted? That's one question. And then if our child gets sick, will, will we be given additional sick time to care for our child at home? So depending on the illness, if it is COVID related, there is additional um uh, sick leave um, that has been approved by by the state, and you would be receiving that additional time. If the illness is due to anything other than COVID, you would be utilizing your own um, sick time. Thank you. And then one last question related to when kids are back in session, specifically to an autism classroom, and I'll take this one. How are we supposed to maintain social distancing when schools open back up? We still have to work through that. Um, my hope is that schools can open sooner than later. Um, we're going to work through those details when we are able to begin planning for uh, kids to return. We have some thoughts, some ideas, um, but at this point, it would be presumptive to talk about that. Um, but definitely, we will circle back to that. Um, and then the last question that we have here, and if we don't have insurance, will the district cover it? If it is a COVID-related um, uh, eligible leave, you will be entitled to those days that have been granted by the, by the state. However, those will exhaust, um, will expire actually um, the end of December. Um, you know, we anticipate on hearing news from, from the state whether those will be um, extended or not. But you also have the opportunity when open enrollment comes up here in October, September, October, to, um, to join and um, at, be added to our district insurance at that time as well for coverage. Okay, then I was going to throw one more at you, Christine. Christine twice mentioned at this time in, in quotation marks, not looking to furlough. In what conditions do you start looking at furlough then? Well, we we start looking at furloughs whenever we the district in, is in a budget constraints. We have been um, our district is in budget constraints, so furloughs not always um, off the table. But when we do do or decide that the district needs to move in that direction, um, we would be in contact and in direct communication with our, uh, uh, with the association, with CSCA, to see what that looks like and what that might be for, for this year. Um, as of right now, just as I said, um, we are not looking to do any furloughs for the 2020-21 school year. Thank you. And Last, then, I think there's ahead. another question. Another question, when are special education aides returning to work? We um, are in the midst of sending a revised school calendar to our board meeting tomorrow with an anticipated um, student instruction day beginning on August 17th. Um, once that gets passed and is approved by our board, we will um, um, have a a uh, tentative return date for our special educations of Friday, August 14. It would just shift everyone's start dates. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to the question about um, I'm a one-on-one A. My job is to physically help my student. How will that work out? We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and then I'm gonna answer the question about when do we come back to school? We come back physically present. We're aiming at, at or about October 9th as a county if the numbers and conditions change. Um, it's going to take an entire community effort, though, to make that happen. Um, but we are aiming at, 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 at on or about October 9th, which is um, the kind of progress reporting window for most districts um, in Bakersfield. So um, hopefully the conditions at that point will be better. Um, but if they're not, we will continue to adjust as we have been adjusting throughout. We're going to get back into our uh, presentation and then we'll come back to questions. Thank you.
All right, let's go to the next. There we go. Okay. So another thing that um, all employees are required is to complete the basic IPM for the classroom and office environment, uh, which meets the requirements of the Healthy Schools Act. So this is what it enables us to, in effect, help clean and sanitize and disinfect those frequently high-touch surfaces that we might have, including things like on a school bus or countertops and, and things as such. So we all want to keep our workspace clean. We all want to keep the spaces around us that way. But we want to be able to use things to wipe down surfaces that are going to kill the virus that um, have been shown to do that. In order for us to use the, that type of um, material, uh, we have to take this basic uh, IPM for classroom and office environment course. So it's, it's very brief, doesn't take very long. And again, that is included in that email that has come from HR with you on the health and safety protocols. Um, the other, another thing we are doing is ensuring that we have regular preventative maintenance completed on all our air filtration systems. So we know movement of air and good movement of air helps mitigate the spread of any kind of virus. And so we wanna make sure that um, that regular filtration uh, maintenance is occurring. And then also we'll be limiting the use and sharing of objects and equipment, obviously, so that there's less um, possibility of transfer of a virus on equipment or material. So next slide. All right, so district signage and communication. So uh, we're gonna continue to communicate um, as we have throughout this pandemic. So we've engaged in really a robust form of communication and doing several town halls, um, you know, and we've only recently put out the documents we've had, which you should have in your email inbox because we've only recently just finalized that. So as we have additional information, it's our job to get it out to you in a rapid and quick way uh, to make sure you have it in as many ways as possible. Again, why we're doing these town halls, again, why these town halls can be uh, watched at a later date. And all the questions that come up in the chat box, we are recording tonight so that we can put out a frequently asked questions document based on the town hall so that people who weren't able to be a part of it can have answers to those questions that you asked too. Because there's probably many people out there have the same questions, right? So, um, so all of our employees are required to follow all the protocols and all expectations while at work. So that means, you know, you might be one of those, um, uh, people who think, well, you know, I don't really think I need to do this in this situation or this in that situation. That's great if you feel that way. But for all the protocols that we have, the expectation is that everybody follows them regardless of what their personal feelings are about them. Um, there'll be health and safety signage presented at all the districts and school facilities. So our campus supervisors and Myron Williams have gone around this summer to place those signs throughout the district on campuses and here in the district office. Um, rooms will have a room capacity number listed by them to let you know how many people are supposed to be in the room. And that is so that we can maintain that physical distancing. And then also hand washing posters will be present in restrooms, just as an important reminder of proper hygiene. So the next slide. So face covering. So all staff members are required to wear a face covering. And that is the governor's order that when we're out, we're to require face coverings. And again, the reason for the face covering is that it shields us from pushing forth some of our aspirations or air that may contain the virus if we were infected or we could be asymptomatic and not know we are infected. And it helps us prevent from pushing that out to other people. That's the purpose of the face covering. So you may have heard a lot of things about, well, face coverings don't protect you. They don't do this. Well, yes, they don't 100% protect you like an N95 mask. But if we all wear face coverings and we're not pushing out all of that air, we're not pushing out all of that liquid out of our mouth, that has been shown to be the primary way in which this virus is spread, which is why it's so important that everyone wears a face covering. Uh, to the extent possible. Um, so there are staff that in certain cases might not be able to use a face covering in the classroom because of certain things they're doing, like communicating with or assisting students with special needs or younger students. So we do have face shields as well. 
um, that will be provided in those circumstances. Again, a face shield is a barrier that allows that direct um, liquid or aspiration coming out of your mouth to hit the face shield instead of going out um, forward. Um, and then if a staff member chooses to wear one of those face shields, a staff member must wear a face covering when they're outside of the classroom. And so just to, just to circle back on this one, a couple of questions in the chat uh, box. Um, we as a district are providing necessary PPE to our school sites. Much of that has already been um, delivered, uh, talking about face uh, coverings, um, those have been delivered both for staff and for students. When students do return to school, we're talking about necessary, as Tim talked about the shields, we're talking about gloves, hand sanitizer as well. Um, so all of those elements will be present in our schools and replenished. Um, talking about replacing the soap, hand soap in our um, soap dispensers. Um, the district has invested significantly to ensure that staff is not uh, required to bring their own uh, materials, resources, that those will be uh, stored and placed uh, in our school facilities for use by staff and hopefully by students when students return. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we, we circle back on that one as well. Next slide. All right, so physical distancing. So this is another one of those important things we need to do to minimize spread of the virus. So. Um, the science and the research is showing us that the virus is transmitted through those little water droplet particles that come from our mouth or nose, um, and they tend to fall down to the ground um, before six feet. So if we can maintain six feet of physical distancing, again, we're less likely to transfer this if we don't know we have it to somebody else. So just keep, always keep remember that these things work together. So if I have on a mask and I'm physically distant, I'm really increasing the um, mitigating factors of me actually transmitting this virus. So these things work together. Uh, so we've placed ground markings in certain places where people might stand naturally because they're waiting in line to be spaced six feet apart as visual reminders for students and for staff. Those reduced room capacity signs also for that purpose. And when we do return to in-person instruction and we do look at transporting students, we will have modified transportation plans to allow for that physical distancing on school buses as well. So we wanna make sure that we take that into account. So just a reminder, you may be around people and, and you might be on your work site and you think, well, they're, they're safe. They've all had a temperature check, they're here with me. It still doesn't mean that you should be congregating less than six feet apart. It's very important that we follow all of these things to protect each other and keep that in mind. So next slide. Yeah, a couple of questions real quick. Uh, this is gonna, I'm gonna invite Christine, Aaron back in again. If an employee tests positive at a school site, will the staff move to working from home in order to prevent further spread of the virus? Mute you. That work. There you go. There okay. You go. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> so um, that's a good question. So there are times that um, a site may be, or a classroom, or a facility, or a partial closure may have to occur. It depends on the exposure, the positive exposure. And um, so each and every positive exposure that is notified to either um, HR, if it's an employee, or um, is it Tim or Terry or student exposure, they will be looked at individually and based on um, a case-by-case -case basis will be determined whether there needs to be a full closure of a facility or a partial or limited closure of a facility um, following the guidance that we are given from the public health department along with their guidance, I should say. So not necessarily if there is an employee with a positive, um, will facilities need to be closed? And just to expand upon that, you know, all of these preventative measures that we're talking about tonight, all of the protocols and expectations, if done right, will go a long way to limit 
any potential spread um, across the school site and office um, location. We as employees need to follow these expectations so that in the event that someone were to um, have been exposed and come to work feeling fine, and in the middle of the day, um, start to not feel fine, we limit um, the risk across uh, the location of that employee. So as Christine said, we'll look at each individual situation uniquely, um, but all of us um, have a lot of responsibility um, to support each other and not um, expose each other. So, uh, which is why we put these expectations and protocols into place. Next question. Some of us share office workspace that makes social distancing not possible. Well, uh, well, will our administration help have to provide alternative workspace when we return? Yes, we we have we we are working and have worked through that same um, topic in the education center offices. Um, there should be at least six feet of distancing between uh, workspaces and. Um, we have worked with our site administrators to uh, measure that, and uh, we're going to continue working through that. And that very well may mean that some workspaces are um, pushed apart. It just It's the necessary element right now, um, so we're going to work through that. Um, so if you return to your location and you recognize, wait a minute here, I'm not quite six feet, go to your administrator, go to your supervisor and notify them so that we can remedy that as quickly as possible. Um, will aides and custodians be given PPE equipment? All employees in BCSD will be provided equipment um, for PPE, masks, gloves, et cetera, if the gloves are needed for the duties that individuals perform. Uh, will re the reusable face coverings be provided once or on a daily basis because hospitals don't allow for outside masks or gloves to be used when entering a hospital due to possible con contamination? So cur currently, we are providing a reusable face masks or face coverings to, to uh, that we are providing. However, any face covering will do for the purposes uh, here within the Bakersfield City School District. So it's not that you have to have the one that has the BCSD logo on it. Uh, you can have one that you bring, uh, you know, from home. It just needs to cover your nose, your mouth, and your chin uh, are the important things. So you might see some people wearing those below their nose and things like that. Can't do that. It's got to cover all of those things. but. A review, reusable face covering will be provided to all students and all staff within the district. And then I'm going to go, someone's marking up our screen. Um, here is a, so it's a lengthy one. I'm just going to go through it. Some of the information relative to keeping employees safe from some of BCSD admin staff have stated that six feet of social distance is sufficient to safeguard employees from being infected with the virus. Is it mandatory for all staff to have some kind of face covering on at all times while in classrooms, offices, or any enclosed areas uh, on school properties? On July 9th, 2020, the World Health Organization issued a scientific brief on viral transmission based on 237 epidemiologists an aerosol scientist and maintain that given the possible implications that a route of transmission like short range aerosol transmission cannot be ruled out in crowded poorly ventilated spaces. Therefore, implying that if one takes off their mask and merely breathes or sneezes or talks, the virus droplets can potentially spread throughout the enclosed rooms. Therefore, the only way to safeguard each other is for all staff to have face coverings on at all times. Will this be enforced? Yes. So, uh, go ahead, Christine. Go ahead. I'll follow up after you. So our face coverings are required um, for all employees working here at BCSD. 
I believe Tim's kind of um, gone over the specific bullet points on the use of the face coverings. Um, and also in the documents that were emailed out to employees today, it is, um, it is one of the efforts that we are putting into place for the protection of all of our employees and our students and any visitors that may come. We also um, will be requiring any visitors that come on campus, which will be very rarely um, um, to wear and maintain the face mask during any um, type of communication with employees. Again, uh, we are looking at all levels of, of maintaining social distancing, um, face masks to assist our employees with, with proper safety um, throughout, this, throughout this time period. So I know Tim may have more to add to that. Yeah, um, but before we do that, um, to whoever is clicking through our slides, <laughs> Might need to do a little erasing there of, of that. I'm not. I'm not sure who that is, but um, that this is quite. That's quite entertaining. Uh, so the current guidelines that are within the BCSD return to work protocols, um, you know, are followed that people need to wear uh, face coverings. Uh, however, while seated at one's desk, the use of a face covering is uh, voluntary unless they're working within proximity of staff, students, and visitors. Um, so I can give you an example of that. When I'm in my office by myself, I don't have to have my face covering on. Um, the minute somebody needs to open the door and stand in the doorway, which is more than six feet away from me, uh, to engage in a conversation, I put my face mask on. Um, so that is our current practice um, as it relates to that. Now, uh, again, you heard me mention earlier that as we understand more, as the CDC understands more, and there's more research done on transmission and things, uh, those type of guidelines may change and adapt. Uh, we would expect that um, since this is a relatively new uh, virus and our understanding of it is still developing. Um, so that's very, very important. So I would anticipate between now and then we may have um, enhanced guidance as it relates to that, um, but that's our current guidance as it is right now. Thank you. All right. So we will be doing engaging in health education, not just with our students and staff, but also with parents. Um, and those include the use of hand washing and hand sanitizer. Um, avoiding contact with eyes, nose, and mouth. I, I don't know about all of you, but I never realized uh, before this how much I touched my face, um, wearing glasses, and, and now I don't hardly touch it at all. And, and um, you know, so you might want to be cognizant of that. Um, always covering coughs and sneezes in the event that you didn't have a mask on in some situation. Uh, the importance of physical distancing, the importance of face coverings, and then those health screening practices uh, that we've discussed already. Thank you. So key practices um, that we you know, to talk about, always make sure you wash your hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, or use hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer needs to have 60% alcohol content or higher. Uh, if soap and water are not available. Soap and water are sufficient when you're washing your hands. Um, if you don't have soap and water, then use that hand sanitizer. You want to, again, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, and uh, always just continually wash your hands. Teach your children to do so. And then also avoid close contact with people who are sick. Uh, and, and in general, maintain that six feet of distance between people who are sick and really anyone else. All right. All right. So stay home if you're sick or you've been exposed to someone who has COVID-19. So you may know, re realize in the past few years, we've had a real big push for attendance and, you know, wanting people to be there. And in some cases, you know, maybe parents may have brought kids because even though they were a little sick, we said bring them to school anyway. 
Uh, we're not doing that anymore. Um, that's guidance that's been approved by the state. So if you're sick or if kids are sick, we want them to stay home. There's no need to come to school when we're sick or come to the workplace when you're sick. Um, make sure, obviously, cover your mouth and nose with a tissue if you cough or sneeze. Uh, and if you do, throw the tissue in the trash and wash your hands immediately. Uh, if you don't have a tissue on you and you don't have that mask on, cough into your elbow, not your hand. Wear face coverings uh, whenever you leave the home. Again, that is the governor's order, so you should be wearing those face coverings. And then clean and disinfect any highly touched surfaces in your home or in your workspace daily. So now we're gonna move into the questions that we're receiving related to, um, I work in an instructional support capacity. Um, what are my duties gonna be? Uh, what um, elements of expectation will there be? Now, mind you, uh, as, a, as a team, our classified employees, uh, yourselves included, have been working since March 18th to do a myriad of essential services for the students and families of PCSD. Um, as uh, we've been going through the summer, everyone who's stationed at the education center has continued working through um, transitioning to start our school year. Um, and now we're at the point where tomorrow night we have a um, board meeting with an updated uh, calendar going for approval, um, and uh, that's going to then define some return to work dates um, that many of you are asking about. So uh, we want to come back to that. Uh, and you Tomorrow night, you want to pay careful attention to the board's decision on the calendar uh, for what the effective first day back for returning is. Um, so first and foremost for our district, uh, it's important to note uh, that all of our students um, will receive a Chromebook and hotspot if needed. Um, uh, we want to make sure um, that students have access to technology and connectivity, and that is no longer a barrier. Uh, for so um, as some of you have posted in the chat box, we have staff on site right now. And we'll be for the entire week this week, organizing materials and preparing them for um, a return uh, to school distribution period uh, next week that I'll talk about shortly. So what will a school day uh, be like? Um, all of our students in BCSD um, are going to start their school day at 8.15 in the morning. Um, teachers will utilize Zoom. Uh, and other district, uh, as our district-wide uh, web conferencing platform. So all of our teachers have uh, Zoom accounts that have been purchased by the district as an elevated level of security um, and options for teachers to use, um, including uh, breakout rooms for small group instruction. Google Classroom will serve as our district-wide learning management system. That is where all of the assignments will be a place for students to complete. Um, our district will provide grabbing goal meals um, for students daily. Lunches for the day and the following day's breakfast will be provided to students. Uh, this will be a district-wide scheduled break um, for everyone, approximately 11.45 to 1 o'clock daily um, for the purposes of picking up meals. Um, students who are enrolled in our extended learning program academies will receive an additional coupon um, for their after-school snack. And yes, the academy will continue. Um, we will continue to run a virtual academy this year um, until we can bring kids back um, in person. So let's talk a little bit about it for the define what our day will look like. You're going to hear these words, uh, synchronous and asynchronous learning. Synchronous means live. It's when the teacher is live with kids. Asynchronous is more of assignment-based learning. A teacher says, okay, guys, I want you guys to turn off your camera for a second, mute yourself on Zoom, and let's get through these next one or two assignments. And then we're gonna come back together, we're gonna to review, discuss. Um, so that's kind of the difference between a live synchronous block and a, an, a, an assigned asynchronous block. Um, again, students will receive small group instruction and support on a weekly basis. 
Um, students will receive grades for this period of distance learning. So this will not be like the March through May period where um, the state of California dictated that districts uh, hold kids harmless for grades. We will administer grades um, for this period of time. So if our teachers are doing this, our support staff, so how do we support student learning? Um, as teachers, again, are providing instruction to students, our instructional aides, both in the general and special education um, programs, will support these efforts by pushing into the classrooms via Zoom. So as you return um, to work, we will train you on how to utilize Zoom. We'll provide that direction and guidance for you. You will work and coordinate with your assigned teachers to understand how you can support kids on what skills and services to provide um, to assist students. Our office staff and school support staff will continue to focus our efforts to support parents and families with attendance and daily engagement in distance learning. Um, per the state of California, we are required to um, strictly monitor attendance and strictly monitor daily engagement. So we are building out attendance support teams at the school site where staff will be calling home every day and, and, and contacting families where children are not um, engaged um, to get them logged in, understand what is the challenge of uh, students not being logged on and support our families to that end. Um, our academic and SEL support staff um, will continue to focus our efforts on engaging and supporting students and families. So um, our behavior intervention specialists, our uh, youth service specialists, our uh, social workers, um, all of our members of our team who work with our service delivery model to assist the SEL aspects of our instructional program, um, we'll continue to do that work. And so we've had several questions in the chat box about home visits. And so I'm gonna let Dr. Fulenweider address that question and um, talk about how we envision home visits being done this year in a very safe uh, manner. Yeah, so we've actually been conducting home visits all throughout the summer for various reasons. And when we look at a home visit, we're not looking at going into anyone's home or, any, or anything like that. Um, but again, if we think about what the guidelines are for safety, wearing a mask, a face covering, uh, physical distancing of six feet or more, um, it's, it's very easy to actually do a home visit. So it involves calling ahead, um, making sure that someone is home. Um, it involves, you can go up to a door and we can knock on the door and back up six feet when the door opens, have a conversation in the same way that we would uh, with anyone else, both being protected by face coverings, both being protected um, by the physical distancing. On the event, we need to drop off materials because we've been doing that all summer. Somebody needs a Chromebook and they couldn't come down and pick it up because they were working. Uh, we might take one of them to their residence in the evening. Um, so again, you know, following a safety protocol, calling the parent, letting them know exactly when we'd be there, going up to the door, placing the material we need to give them on the doorstep, knocking, backing up six feet, or even calling to let them know it's there, watching them open the door and then receive the things they need to do. Um, you know, we're able to deliver that way. Also, we've had to have things signed for various reasons. Um, you know, the requirements for signing documents has, hasn't has gone away for some things. So again, we have that procedure down as well. So when we ask people to make home visits, we have every uh, person, we encourage them to have a box, much like a paper box that paper would come in uh, with them in the trunk of their car, the back seat of their car. Um, they can wear gloves on the home visit if they need to exchange a document. Again, leave it on the porch with a pen to sign, have the person then open the door when you back up. They sign the documents that are needed. Uh, you can explain anything to them, you know, being six feet away. And then they can place the document back down on the ground. They can keep the pen as a parting gift. And then we can go up pick up the material with our gloved hand, put it in that paper box, and then bring it back to the office where it can sit for a day. And by that time, we'll be inert based on the guidelines we've been given. And therefore, we've had things signed that way. 
Um, we can have things mailed back and forth and we've done home visits that way. So there's a safe way to do that that follows exactly the same safety protocols that we would have uh, in a normal environment should a visitor come to the campus to conduct a visit, to conduct business. So we feel pretty good about that. We haven't had any issues with that in the past. And so this week that guidance uh, very directly will be coming out to staff and we haven't released it yet just because we wanted to make sure the wording on it was right and have a lot of eyes look on it for their uh, expertise. But it will be coming out this week for staff, and um, we think it'll be a great process for us all. And just to go back, so that's a lot of our SEL support team members that Tim's describing who oftentimes complete our home visits. Um, on the academic side, specifically our face liaisons and our uh, library media staff, um, the work continues, but it will look different this year. Um, we are not able to um, handle books. Uh, guidance is very, very clear that there should be no sharing of materials and resources. Um, so we have purchased an online um, digital library for kids to access to um, utilize to practice reading, um, but our library media staff still comes in handy. We still want them to support um, the development of literacy and love of literacy um, through the recording of read-alouds and, and the like, um, supporting um, the academic needs of our students, especially those young learners. Um, our face liaisons, the work to engage our families never stops. And so it's the same ideology of how do we take and build upon the success and passion of our work with face in a virtual format. Um, our face staff is going to be relied upon to really work with parents to understand how to use a computer as well. Um, it's not always innate that our families understand um, the resources that our kids are gonna be expected to utilize this year. So we're gonna work together. We're gonna clearly call out and line out those duties. And um, it's all, all hands on deck this year. Um, as uh, Christine said, you know, we're not uh, looking to uh, furlough right now. It's not the conversation. The conversation certainly is that we have a lot of work to be done and we're gonna work with Lindy and CSEA um, to get to agreement on a on an MOU that um, allows us all to help each other and work together in a safe um, manner that doesn't um, uh, risk the health of, of, of employees. So I wanted to, to denote those two elements uh, really quickly. Um, in addition, our ELP staff, our after school academy staff, will perform their assigned duties from their assigned school site. Our nutrition staff will continue to support the opinion of our students. Our custodial staff will continue to ensure facilities are clean and sanitized on a daily basis. And then all of our um, educational center uh, classified staff continue working through um, their duties and responsibilities um, to keep our district moving forward. So the next two- Can I jump in with yes, something from the chat? So uh, there's a couple questions, a couple ones about uh, I see some language barrier questions about calling home. You know, what if there's a language barrier? One of the unique things that we have available to us this year is a different way to communicate with parents um, through ARIES communication, um, and it's called Parent Square. So um, there are lots of other districts that have been using this in the state of California. One of the best features of it is it allows us to communicate with parents in our own language and it be translated to their own language so that we can have a simultaneous live conversation uh, speaking each other's language um, and it translates for us. So we're really excited about that. So even in situations where we may not speak the language of our uh, one of our, our students, families, or um, someone in the office that speaks a different language than the person they want to talk to on the phone, we can utilize that ParentsWare app to actually carry on that conversation with them. That's really exciting. All right, thank you. Um, what are the expectations for specially funded clerks? Um, they are part of the school support team. That's attendance monitoring and engagement um, for students. Um, Will VAPA staff still be sharing a space with teachers? Um, 
I would have to look at each of those instances um, individually to understand what does the space look like and does the space allow for distancing um, to be able to answer that uh, question. Um, so let's go to the next two weeks and then we'll come back to the final questions in the chat box. So this week right now, all of our offices in the district are open uh, to the public by appointment. So we're encouraging families who need um, to seek support and guidance to call, make an appointment so that school sites and offices can control the number of folks to ensure distancing um, and the like. Uh, effective this morning, all employees in our district uh, are required to follow the health and safety protocols. Um, priority tasks for this week, and I saw it mentioned um, in the chat earlier, we did call back staff last week to assist us with two main priorities. One, it's contacting families. Um, you know, it's been five months since we've last physically seen many of our families in person. Um, our families tend to move quite a bit uh, within school sites, across school sites. And so we want to be proactive in reaching out to families, find out, uh, you know, one, are you okay? Two, are you aware that school's starting? Three, let's start to share information with you um, about the return to school plan. Um, and then organizing student materials, which is a big task when you're talking about organizing materials for 31,000 students, um, textbooks, resources, Chromebooks, hotspots, all of that. Um, so that's gonna be a week long effort. Um, and again, many of you, um, if you serve in those roles, we're called back to work to assist. We appreciate uh, your willingness to do so. Uh, you know, we can't do this work without you. So next week, uh, between August 10th and 13th, we are looking to schedule this distribution week. We have sent out to all of our parents um, letters denoting who their teacher is for this year, what their schedule is for, for middle school, junior high. We're also sending out uh, today and tomorrow um, a packet for parents that's going to have um, copies of all the important documents that parents need to fill out and return to school. Our hope and our ask of parents is, Fill it out before you come to pick up your materials. So it's a quick transition transfer of a uh, packet for materials and parents can then leave. Um, we're trying to limit the amount of time uh, folks are present on campus to pick up things. And then ultimately, um, Friday, August 14th, uh, we will hold district-wide uh, student, parent, teacher, virtual orientations. Um, a couple of sessions that day uh, as an introduction between our students, parents, um, and their teacher. And then our first day of school um, with board approval tomorrow night will be Monday, August 17th, uh, which will be in virtual only format. And so again, as you return to work, if you're not yet back to work, we will have more information uh, available to you. If you serve in an instructional support capacity, um, including uh, instructional aids for the general ed or the special ed side, and you're um, thinking right now, well, I don't know Zoom. It's, I don't understand it. Never been taught it. We will we'll teach you that. We'll work with you on the, those aspects, and then we'll we'll slowly transition you back into student support. Um, you know, over the first week, week and a half of school. So <laughs> just know as we work through the MOU completion, um, we will support your efforts to fully understand um, and, and and feel confidence in whatever the duties and responsibilities um, that we're asking of you um, for the start of the school year. And so I'm going to, so we, we continue to get questions in the chat box regarding um, working from home or working from school. And I think uh, I wanna clarify something. Um, from the beginning, administration has communicated that uh, we would be willing and flexible with, in that case, teachers, classroom teachers to work from home if they meet detailed expectations to do so. Uh, we have lined those expectations out um, and teachers who can uh, can choose to work from home, can choose to work from school, and those who can't will work from their classrooms. Um, it's, it's not as simple as uh, I get to pick where I, where I want to be. Um, so we're going to have to work through that. That's a, that's an MOU conversation. 
So bear with us on that. And just to come back to one more piece, um, every child in our district will receive a Chromebook if needed and a hotspot if needed. Every child individually, not one family, just to clarify that. So uh, again, just to clarify my previous statement, when we talk about where we work from, I can only give you the context of the completed MOU with the teachers. That's completed now pending board approval. It's a conversation regarding meeting the expectations to be able to, to perform the duties. Um, so that conversation needs to wait until um, the district and CSA work through our MOU. Um, but for now, um, I really can't get into more detail than that. I apologize. There's still information to work out. So please bear with us on that. Um, closing comments. I want to invite Doc, uh, who I missed earlier. I apologize, Doc. No. Nope. Uh, no, I think that you, Tim, and the team did a great job. Um, I'll be quick. I just wanted to say, though, that keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, and most of you know this, that since March, uh, since this pandemic started, um, we really, as a district, began to uh, put together our return to school task force. So we've been working behind the scenes um, with this plan um, for a long time. And we've had a lot of collaboration from our associations have been very supportive. Um, our parents have been very supportive, our staff. We've had over 100 people working on this. And I know there's still a lot of questions out there. But we hope today that you have a high level overview and understanding of what went into this plan. Uh, a lot of thought went into this plan. And again, I think Mark might have talked about it early on. It's not a perfect plan. We know that. There's still a lot of questions out there. And these are, these are uncharted territories, unprecedented times. So we felt like it was very important that we get everybody's input before we present it to the board on what we thought our plan was. And, and one of the things that's very important, remember, we're the largest elementary school district in the state. We all know that. And one of the things that we've done well, we have not had a lot of issues in terms of going forward with putting together our plan. That's because most of you on the line, um, and, and, and I would say all of you, have been played a huge role in creating this collaborative shared decision-making culture that we have here at the district. Lindy, I think Lindy Nielsen must be on the line I'm not sure if Lindy's on the line or not, Tim. Oh, yeah, there you are, Lindy. I see you. But Lindy will tell you as well that we've always collaborated very well over the last three, four years with everyone to make sure that when we make a decision, the decision is in the best interest of kids going forward. So um, be patient. Um, I'm looking at all the questions here. I'm in the chat. I'm glad I didn't have to engage as much today because I think the team had it. But I will say this. This is something I'm getting publicly. Um, and I see it on the chat line, people always asking about, are, are people going to lose their jobs? I think, Christine, you covered it. We're not doing furloughs. We've never talked about laying off staff or anyone losing their jobs. Um, and so uh, there's been no conversation regarding that. Um, but I will say that going forward, just be patient. If you have questions, please reach out to your immediate supervisor. You can always reach out via email to Dr. Fullenwilder, Mark, myself. Uh, Christine, anyone in our district, we're always available, but just know that um, we're not going to have all the answers right now, but we're going to get to a place to where uh, we're going to be where we were prior to this pandemic, which is at the highest level of excellence. So I will close by reminding you that, you know, one, continue to, to know that every decision we're making is in the best interest of kids. And, and, and everyone plays a role in those conversations, but we have to continue to do that. Secondly, remember, as an employee of the Bakersfield City School District, each and every one of you are a role model. And you're looked upon as a role model. And so continue to carry yourself as such. Um, and then lastly, remember that we're all educational ambassadors as well. And so be patient. But again, um, we look forward to seeing everyone um, when we start school next week. And uh, unless anybody disagrees, I think we will continue to be very successful. Um, nothing is changing. The only thing that's changing is our strategy. That's it. You think about it. We're still doing school, but from another perspective is looking different. So I hope that many of you on the line who participated in these um, uh, committees, because we had over 100 people on the task force and little subcommittees, 
I, I, I applaud you guys for the hard work and effort. And I thank you for allowing our team to put this, this plan together to share not only with you, but the general public. So with that, unless Tim uh, uh, and Mark has anything to say, I know Lindy's on the line. Lindy, anything you want to add? Um, because I know that you're the classified, you know, the CSCA president. Anything you want to add, Lindy? Um, as I as I uh, yield my time back to Mark. Uh, no, I just want to let everybody know that the MOU is being worked on right now. Uh, it's uh, at our at the labor rep right now, uh, going over it, and we're finalizing it. We'll take it to the negotiation team, and then we'll deliver it to the district. Hopefully, within the next uh, couple of days, for sure. Um, so we are. Uh, and sooner if we can get that there. So there's just a, a, we got a lot of job classifications that we have to look at in order to uh, give that protection. So uh, bear with us. Thanks, Lindy. Thank you. Mark, I'm good. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Doug. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm going to hang on the meeting for a little bit longer. Please add any additional questions that you still have. Um, we are going to take all the questions and put together a completed FAQ to respond to. Um, hopefully, we can get that done uh, by the end of this week. It's been taking us about a total week, so at the latest next Wednesday, but because of where we are with the schedule, try to get it done by Friday. So please add any additional questions you have to the chat box. They're all great questions. Um, and if you have unique situations with respect to home environments, I encourage you to contact HR. Um, they can give you all the information um, related to um, your scenario uh, with leaves and or uh, other topics. So check with them. Um, it's best to be informed. Uh, just know that as we continue to see changes come from um, uh, the state or the county level, we'll keep all of our staff updated. So thank you so much for your patience. 